Hello, and welcome to Age-Friendly Bay Area, a program in which we explore the wide range of services and resources that are available for older adults in the greater Bay Area. My name is Scott McMullen, co-founder and board member of San Villages of San Mateo County, and I will be hosting today's program. In the past several months, we've had guest speakers describe some wonderful organizations, and you can view those interviews in previous episodes. Today, we'll learn more about the village movement that has swept the United States and the Bay Area in the past 20 years. Our guest is Marlene Hopper, Vice President and longtime volunteer leader of Foster City Village. Marlene, welcome to the program. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate nice, being here. Nice to have you here. Marlene, I'd like to start by giving our viewers a brief refresher on the concept of age-friendly, and then show how the village movement really fits into that. Age-friendly is a term that was coined by WHO, the World Health Organization, and they say that age-friendly environments enable older people to age safely in a place that is right for them. From those words, I have to say that the village movement has to be one of the most age-friendly programs that I can imagine. So tell us in your words, what is a village? A village is a membership-based nonprofit organization that grows with the members' needs and wants. Like-minded neighbors find each other and their goal is to continue living in the home that they love. That sounds perfect. So aging in place is one of the uh, phrases that's often used to describe mm -hmm. that. And I wonder if maybe if now is a good time for us to have a look at a video that your organization has prepared. I would love that. Good, so I'll start that video. Hello, my name is Marlene Hopper and I am with Foster City Village. The village concept began in Beacon Hill, a village that was founded by a group of older neighbors in Boston in 2001. Those neighbors created a way to continue living vibrant and healthy lives in their homes and community, even as they aged and gradually needed more support and services. And that is what Foster City Village is all about. I am proud to tell you that we are the first village established in San Mateo County in 2013. Now in our eighth year, we are a nonprofit, membership-based organization comprised of volunteers helping members to have an improved quality of life. Our members' families derive peace of mind knowing that they are taken care of and our volunteers thrive by making new friends, making a difference in the lives of others and the opportunity to do so in a hyper-local setting within the community they love. Currently, members of Foster City Village have access to a variety of services and programs, including transportation, companionship, membership, social activities, which offer a wonderful opportunity to meet like-minded new folks. We also do home safety evaluations, provide handyman services and technical assistance to help you enjoy the benefits of today's technologies. Know that our programs are geared to our members' needs and wishes, and that is how we grow. Additionally, our village, as a volunteer organization, aids in community efforts to support all seniors throughout Foster City. We distribute for Second Harvest Food Bank twice a month and deliver Meals on Wheels daily. Now more than ever, Foster City Village needs your help by introducing folks that you know would benefit by becoming a member or a volunteer and who want to have fun, be happy, stay healthy, and enjoy living life. Our community cares and together we are strong. That is a great video. And so your team really put together a lot of information in a two and a half minute segment, so pretty incredible. Um, and you've given us a lot of background, I think, on how Village Movement got started and Foster City Village in particular. Is there anything more you'd like to say about the evolution of villages? How did they come sure. to be? Sure. About 20 years ago in the Boston area, Beacon Hill, mm. a suburb of downtown Boston, 
had a group of neighbors that loved living where they were. They were very happy. Only as they were getting older, they couldn't climb the ladder anymore. They couldn't change the light bulbs. They couldn't bend down and pick up things. And they thought, well, what are they going to do? They absolutely did not want to move. They did not want to leave the area. Mm -hmm. So bright as they were, they came up with this village concept that made the New York Times. Mm -hmm. When the New York Times article published, that was the introduction in my feeling of the village movement. And that's how we learned about it. Good, I wondered how the word got out. I've often told people it was 20 minutes or 60 minutes or something, yeah. uh, but New York Times is New the way York it happened. Times. So uh, many communities around the country wanted to form villages mm -hmm. and Foster City was one of those. So when did you get started? So we were the first village to start in San Mateo County our opening day was February 14 of 2013. Yep. We awesome. will be 10 years old next in this coming February. Mm -hmm. So every village um, in their early stages has to decide what's our mission mm -hmm. and what are we going to be about and what's our vision statement. Would you like to tell us yours for Foster oh, City Village? Absolutely. So our vision is building dynamic community for older adults. Mm -hmm. And how we interpret that is we, as the video said, got involved with Second Harvest Food Bank. We brought that to Foster City. Today we serve over 6,000 people Amazing. in a year. In a year. They're up to 500 people a week. Mm. Two, times a, two times a month, rather. Yeah. Uh, they come in cars. They bring in their carts and walk up. And today it's boxed goods. So they're getting approximately 30 to 40 pounds of groceries, um, vegetables, canned goods, milk, eggs, chicken. And there's a huge need today because of the socioeconomics happening yeah. for that. Then we did Meals on Wheels, uh, which we do today. And from delivering five days a week, the program has morphed into two days a week. And we do 36 homes each day, and that multiplies up to about 3,700 meals served at the end of the year. Fantastic. So our community commitment has mm -hmm. more than been fulfilled, and there, it keeps growing, which is amazing. Right. Our uh, mission statement is to connect social, to create social connections. Mm -hmm. The more isolated people get, the more depressed they get. Socialization is key to keeping our minds active, our bodies moving, and we have a very robust calendar, which I will speak to later. Uh, the other thing is fostering enriching opportunities hmm. to get out and learn and to be with like-minded people. And the third thing is to support overall well-being, which is our health. Hmm. And so we have a, uh, an excellent exercise program. We walk around the lagoon. Um, in California, we're able to be outside and enjoy. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful concept, great organization, and of course I know Foster City Village <laughs> because I used to live in Foster City. I uh, subsequently moved out to a nearby town, but um, I just want, I'm really amazed and pleased by what you've done there. Now, you mentioned it's a membership organization, so that takes uh, perhaps dues to join. Can you describe your dues concept and how you arrived at the number you did? It's kind of a cute story because we really didn't know when we opened, we couldn't anticipate what we were going to get. Mm -hmm. How many rides were we going to need? What the people were asking for? And the three minds that sat in our dining room and talked about it came up with a dollar a day. $365 for the year because mm -hmm. that's easy. Mm -hmm. And we put it out there. Well, 10 years later, we're still at the same $365 for a full service member, mm -hmm. which includes the transportation. Our second membership is social interaction. That's $175 a year. And that includes all the social activities that we put on at no extra charge. Mm -hmm. Unless we go to Hill Barn Theater or we go to a movies or something, then everybody pays their own mm -hmm. way. The third thing we have is for a needs-based membership. Ah. And then the fourth thing we have is something that I'm 
so proud of, and I have to look to say it right. Mm -hmm. It's a free centenarian mm -hmm. membership. When our members reach 100 years of age, they get free membership for the rest of their life. And we have four members today in 100, one being 104. Amazing. <laughs> I would not have known that about Foster City Village. Thank you for sharing. For sure. Um, so why should somebody consider joining a village? As we age, and we're all aging, mm -hmm. things happen to our body that we have no control over. People lose their eyesight. Macular degeneration mm -hmm. is a big thing. Hearing loss is a big thing. Um, they lose their driver's license and radically affects their independence. And they lose their spouse or partner mm -hmm. and the isolation sets in. So why join the village? To avoid all of the the reactions of the effects of losing mm -hmm. things in your life because the village gives them life. Uh, we like to put the word fun in our village because everybody knows what we're going through today isn't fun. So if we can bring some laughter and joy and a smile on their faces, we've done our job. Mm -hmm. Well, you're very good at that. You're a great <laughs> ambassador, always with a smile on your face, which I, you. I just love that. <laughs> So I've heard you say that volunteers are the backbone of a village organization. Can you describe what that means? Sure. Uh, members request. Our volunteers fill the request. So the mm -hmm. key is you have to have a base of volunteers that are multifaceted, that can do a home repair, that can fix a computer, mm -hmm. that can climb the ladder to change the light bulb, that is... Um, as we talked earlier, Scott, people that volunteer are a certain kind of being. They have a big heart. Mm -hmm. They care. And without volunteers, we wouldn't have members. And without members, we wouldn't need volunteers. Uh, our, our volunteers have come from all walks of life. We're fortunate in that we're one zip code. So everybody, it's a real community. Everybody knows and connects with everybody, and it makes it very doable. Mm -hmm. And a volunteer, some of them are retired. Some of them are still working, but they don't really like what they're doing, so volunteering is a diversion. And some of them um, have aspirations of going into the medical field, and working with our seniors gives them a background or a foundation. Mm -hmm. And some of them are parents teaching their kids what's the right thing to do. Yeah, excellent. When you mentioned that you are one zip code, that made me kind of chuckle inside because I remember when my kids were going to school in Foster City, they learned a little song, Foster City, California, 94404. Four. <laughs> Very <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, that's great. Um, so big topic today is diversity, mm -hmm. um, which, and we can talk about diversity in many different facets of life in types of people. Um, how was Foster City Village able to reach out to the community and become more diverse? Well, I think if you saw the video earlier, the diversification of our vid village is mm -hmm. exceptional, and it's because of the population we have. Mm -hmm. um, Foster City has probably every religion, every ethnicity, mm -hmm. and every age group. Um, and mm -hmm. so from that, the people that are interested in a quality of life outside mm -hmm. of their home, the village absolutely fills that need for them. Mm -hmm. And it's been a wonderful education for our members to learn. Um, we have a program called the Learning Hour at the library, and we featured mm -hmm. different um, ethnicities. Mm -hmm. And so when your group, be it the Indian group, the Chinese group, the Japanese group is presenting, the whole population shows up to support. Hmm. And that's been terrific exposure for us. And we've learned about the different yeah. nationalities that we have. Great, okay. And um, diversity of economic background too, it turns out. You mentioned that you have financial assistant exactly. memberships, which is really great. People would not expect in that in this wealthy Bay Area, right. mid-peninsula, you would have people of lower income, but it, it's true. Some people have expensive homes, but very little income. Yeah. 
So thank you for that background. Now you talked about age range. Would you like to get into that a little bit? The, the age range and the um, male female mix and so on of your sure, membership? Sure, sure. Our age range as a member is from 55 to mm -hmm. 104. Mm -hmm. 20% uh, of our members are in the 90-year age bracket, wow. which is a big wow. Everybody is able-bodied. Everybody is healthy. Uh, do they walk with canes or walkers? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, but they walk. So everybody mm -hmm. is mobile, mm -hmm. and that makes it fun to be with. We have 30% uh, of our population is male and obviously 70% is female. We just started a men's club, exclusive. Mm. And so one of the members said, well, what if a woman wants to come? I said, mm, we have enough activities for the women. This is the guy's opportunity. So we'll see where that goes. Mm -hmm. And 45% um, of our membership are couples. And mm -hmm. so 55% are singles. Yep, very good. So um, I know just from the video and your earlier description, a lot of activities go on within your village. Would you like to describe some of them? Are you ready? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so weekly, we do a walk and talk around the Foster City Lagoon. Mm -hmm. uh, no agenda. So everybody can come out. Neighbors that are not members of the village, they see us walking and they join us and we meet new people that way. Mm -hmm. One of the most effective programs that we have is our physical program, our core conditioning, our yoga classes, Monday and Wednesday, mm -hmm. and Tuesday and Thursday. And it's really well received. Before the pandemic, we were live. Now, since the pandemic and since our instructor has had three cases of COVID, she will do only Zoom until it's safe. And so everybody has their own barbells, their own, their own weights, mm -hmm. not barbells, and uh, stretch bands in their house, and mm -hmm. it's chair motivated, and uh, she does a marvelous job with that. Mm -hmm. uh, monthly, we have programs, we have a book club. We have um, breakfast at IHOP to plug one of the most mm. wonderful restaurants. For nine years, we have met in the back room of IHOP in Foster City, and we keep going back because they give us our own checks. So I'm not paying for your breakfast and you're not paying for my coffee. And at the age we're dealing with, that is wonderful. <laughs> and it's very well attended because again, it's an open agenda and people can meet and greet and have some fun. Nice. Um, we have uh, the learning hour at the library where we have docents from the de Young Museum, the uh, Palace of Fine Arts, the Asian Art Museum. We had a woman that came and brought her uh, succulents hmm. who is a retailer in Half Moon Bay and she was wonderful. And our star is a cook named, a chef named Marlene Sarowski Gray, okay. who is a published editor for cookbooks from 20 years ago. She studied with Julia Childs, with James Beard, hmm. and she is phenomenal. And she does a cooking class for us once a month. Great. And now on Zoom, we watch, we get a copy of the menu. When we're live, she actually makes the meals for everybody that attends. Mm, I want to come to that. That's an added, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, and I think that's enough for now. Fantastic activities. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So, um, with so much going on, and it's, it's been so successful, I, it's hard for me to imagine that there are challenges, but every organization has some. What are your biggest challenges? For sure, our biggest challenges is aging. Mm. I, as our population ages in yeah. membership, so do they in volunteers. Ah. And the men that were able to lift things in their 50s and 60s and their 70s aren't so anxious to take that task. So. That's one thing that we're definitely working on. And then um, for the members, um, that's the saddest and hardest part when you reach your 80s, mm. not your 80s, I'm almost there. <laughs> when you reach your 90s and 100 already, um, the future is not as long mm. as we would like it to be. Mm -hmm. So getting members, and this is our advertising. It's everybody it. has the blue t-shirts, yep. sweatshirt, hats. 
uh, wristbands, water bottles, and we're known, you know, for through mm -hmm. that. Uh, but we need to do a better job doing something like this that can be used again is most appreciated mm -hmm. to get the word out of what we do. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, get, uh, attracting younger, new blood volunteers, very important, not only for the tasks that you describe, but also for leadership of the village. Right. And yeah. then the most important thing is the funding. Ah, you want to talk about <laughs> So there's dues coming in. That's part there of your funding. There's dues coming in that cover 20%. That's all. Okay. So there's 80% to go. Mm -hmm. And thank goodness we've got some wonderful grants that are perpetuating. Mm -hmm. And our challenge is to continue after that avenue. And we just hired a new, I knew I wouldn't remember the name. Um, grant writer? Well, grant writer. That okay. sounds terrific. All right. So um, are there some of your sponsors or funders that wouldn't mind being mentioned on this program? Be a pleasure. So if it wasn't for Sequoia Healthcare District mm. and the uh, Foster City Rotary, we would never have been given the opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, Sequoia Healthcare uh, was tremendous backers of the village concept and right. loved what we were doing. Lee Michelson was the lead at the time and he retired um, and they have continued to support us tremendously. Um, the Foster City Rotary mm -hmm. gave us the opportunity to use their foundation ah. when because we didn't have a 501c3 when we opened mm -hmm. and so they enabled us to do that and today they are our biggest um, volunteer base, mm -hmm. as well as funder, as well as um, instrumental in what our success is today. Then the city of Foster City, the Foster City Chamber of Commerce, the Foster City Lions Club have all been supportive mm -hmm. of the village. And that's pretty powerful when you have the city behind you like that. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have Gilead. A phenomenal mm -hmm. company, what mm -hmm. they're doing is exceptional in Foster City, and they have taken a liking to us. So we nice. feel very blessed with that one. Mm -hmm. um, the Alzheimer's Association is appropriate. Danford Foundation, SAMCAR, the Elks Club, and met, thank goodness, many individual donors that appreciate what we're doing. Wow, great job. So um, that's really nice that you have so much support in the community and that you are a community player. I mean, right. it, it's taken some years, but eventually you become an integral part of the, the community services. Right. Fantastic. Um, so you've mentioned your supporters. Uh, I want to just come back and give another shout out to Rotary Club because they have been a great supporter of villages that I'm involved in too. Uh -huh. And you mentioned they were your fiscal sponsor for yes. a while, but you are a 501c3. Oh, we are now. They just, the first uh, nine months until yeah. we got our 501c3, right. okay. they allowed us to use their foundation Good. to put the money through and the lawyers and you know yeah. everything that came with that. Excellent. So, um, do you want to talk a little bit, maybe from your own personal experience, what's the best part of volunteering for Foster City Village? There's or you can so speak many. on behalf of others if you There's like. There's so what? many. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's a wonderful thing to do with your life, with your own mm -hmm. life. I retired, didn't want to be retired, and mm -hmm. didn't know what I was going to do. And I went to a meeting at the City Council Chambers when they introduced the village. Mm -hmm. And Elaine Pitts was 94 at the time, and she sat at that dais, and she spoke like you and I are talking now. And I thought, oh, that's who I want to connect with. That's who I want to be with. And that's how mm -hmm. I got involved in the village. She wanted to live to be 100. She missed it by three months. Mm -hmm. But what an inspiration. What a dynamo lady. The other thing, my husband is treasurer of the village. As a couple, we are committed in every mm -hmm. which way mm -hmm. to the village mm -hmm. and the couples that we have met, the friends that we have made as a result of participating in the village mm -hmm. has been wonderful. Yeah. And uh, you don't get that too many times in your life. Um, yeah. They fill, it, it fills our days with good. That's fantastic. So, um, the village movement is national. You described how it started in Boston, but then it spread around the country. 
So there are actually several support organizations. You're aware of them. Would you like to talk a little bit about Village to Village Network and then Village Movement California and then Bravo? Okay. So the Village, uh, Village to Village Movement started in Beacon Hill, as I mm -hmm. said, and they're 20 years old. Mm -hmm. So they are very solid. Um, the originator of it is still participating with mm -hmm. it, and phenomenal woman. Mm -hmm. From there, it went to... When we started, there wasn't a village to village network, mm -hmm. which is the informational conduit for mm -hmm. all the villages today. Mm -hmm. They have um, an encyclopedia of all the forms, of all the everything that we had to do to get started. So a village today has that available mm -hmm. to them. We were fortunate we had Avenida's Village in Palo Alto, San Francisco Village, Marin City. Marin uh, and Ashby Village to mm -hmm. help us get going. Um, and then the California Village Movement uh, is going more political, which I mm -hmm. think we really need by presenting us as a total. Mm -hmm. And I believe there's 30 mm -hmm. villages in Northern California today, mm -hmm. which is pretty powerful. There's power in numbers. Yeah. And over, I think it's about 50 villages uh, across the whole state, state that belong to Village Movement California. That's and great. And then locally, we have something called Bravo. Bravo. <coughs> Do you Bay, remember what Bay? Bay Regional Area, Area? Village Organization. It's a little, little bit pushed, <laughs> but it works. Right, right. And that's a wonderful com a compilation of all of us locally that are able to get together yeah. maybe once or twice a year yeah. and share our stories and our successes and uh, so that the other people don't do yeah. something that yeah. doesn't work. Good. Okay. So we're down to just about a minute left. It's oh, amazing. It's amazing <laughs> how time <laughs> flies. And there's much more that we could talk about. I have several other questions. but. I think I, we need to begin to bring it to a close. Um, do you have any final message that you'd like to share with the viewers? I certainly appreciate this opportunity uh, to be here today mm -hmm. and uh, have this happen. Mm -hmm. um, everybody is that's involved with the village movement are healthy, strong, wonderful people. Yeah. And Scott McMillan, it's been a pleasure oh, to work you. with you, with Dave McClure, with your team, thank and you. to see the success that we're enjoying. Thanks, Marlene. Yep, and you, Foster City Village was very helpful with getting Sequoia Village started, so thanks to you. So I want to thank you, Marlene, for being on the program today. I also want to thank the staff and volunteer crew of KMVT 15 who make this show possible, working behind the scenes, and you will see their names in the credits in a few minutes. And thank you all at home for watching. I hope you'll join us next month as we continue to explore the range of services for older adults that are available in our neighborhoods. Until then, so long.